it's Tammy with TL Crafts and Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to upcycle with soda tabs. We're going to make something that I like to call bottle bling and I will show you what that looks like. This is a bottle bling. This one for my birthday, my friends took me to Rocky Point and I found all these seashells and even the broken ones were pretty. So I made a lot of uh, really cool things with the seashells I collected and it reminded me of my trip from Rocky Point. And when I go somewhere and I have my, my bottle of water or whatever I'm drinking, I know which one is mine when I set it down on the table amongst everybody else's. This is one that I made for my husband. He graduated from the uh, a U of A, and um, he also plays guitar. And I put this guitar pick on a lobster claw, so if he's out playing and loses his pick, he always has an extra one with him. And then here's just another guitar that I made for him. And this one has yellow tabs. The tabs come in all different colors, and You can even find these plastic ones online. I made a, a bling for a friend of mine and he said it actually ended up saving him a lot of money because um, when you go out to the clubs, uh, he put it on his beer bottle to identify his drink. And um, when he walked over to somebody else's table, if he set his bottle down, he always knew which one was his. He said the other thing is, is a waitress wouldn't come by and take it when you still had like a third of your beer left in there because they don't touch them if they have the blings on them. So he was actually able to finish his beer and keep track of them. So he said it saved him quite a bit of money and he's the one that found these online for me. Uh, they come in all different colors. The holes are different sizes. It doesn't matter. You can mix and match them. Today I'm just going to use the silver ones. Now what you'll need for this is uh, some elastic cord. I'm using a colored cord so you can actually see it. This one's made with a colored cord. This one is made with a clear and you're not really able to see that one. So I'm going to actually use two different color so you can see the different ways that you're able to make this and you'll be able to see better. Okay. I don't really measure M uh, much. so. With the cord, I just take it from the tip of my finger um, all the way up to my shoulder and I add a little extra so like to my neck so that uh, it just makes it easier to tie it off. And I'm going to thread these through these eye pins. Oh, I need to put my glasses on. Okay. Much better. And this is a little better. Okay. You're just going to thread that through. And then just tie a knot at the end. Just put... You could even do this in a slip knot. And I actually squished the end of this head pin just slightly because I may want to feed it through some buttons and I took a pair of just chain nose pliers and just kind of squished it in a little bit. I wanted to be able to feed it through a button if I wanted to. And that, as you can see, will go through the button. All right, let's get started. Uh, when I first started making these, I didn't know to use these. These are probably the simplest things to use. But when I first started, I was using bread ties, 
I was using safety pins. I was using bobby pins. So it doesn't have to be on a head pin. Uh, you just need something that you can feed through your soda tabs. Now to make the bottle bling, you need 24 soda tabs. If you wanna put it on um, something like, say like a solo cup to keep track of your drink when you're out at a party, uh, or if you have a party, um, you'll need about 28, I'm, I think. Yeah, I think about 28. So the number of soda tabs is based on, you know, how size the circumference of uh, whatever your drink is that you're putting it on, okay? All right, so to start off, you start by putting your tabs rough sides together. You can do it like this, you can do it like that, it doesn't matter while you're learning if you accidentally flip them back and forth, that's okay too. But you're gonna start off using three. And what you do is you feed it through down through you're gonna feed it down through so that they actually share the hole so these two are going to share this hole and you actually have to make sure you're doing it the right way because let me show you I'll just show you what happens if you're doing it the wrong way. So let's say I'm going down through here and up through here. As you can see, I accomplished nothing. These two stayed together, but I didn't accomplish what I wanted to. So, You're gonna come up through the back. These two are gonna share this one's hole. And now as you can see, they are attached. I'm gonna do the same thing with the dark purple. I'm gonna come up through the back side, down through the front, and there we have it. Oh, straighten that out just a little bit. Okay. You want to leave a little bit for tying off the end. So what I like to do is I like to put a clip on these. So that, oops, if I'm tugging too hard, this works especially well with the clear elastic because that can tend to slide all the way through. This cord isn't quite as slippery, so you, should, you have a better chance of this one staying in place. All right, so now you take your next one, you put your sharp sides together. Make sure the smooth side is out. And these two are gonna share this hole. Let's see what we have going here. And here's the reason why I'm doing different colors. Okay, so this is just a basic stitch that's gonna keep them all connected. But 
you may want to crisscross them just for design purpose. So in order to do that, you take the one instead of going through here, you just go through the bottom hole. And then you take the bottom one and go through the top hole. And now you have this pretty little cross right here. We'll take another tab, make sure it's the sharp side, put the sharp sides together, come up through the back, those two are sharing that one hole. These two are sharing this one. It doesn't really matter if the cords overcross each other, I just Actually, it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Make sure the sharp sides are together. This one I'm going to do straight. I'm not going to criss... Well, I'll crisscross two in a row for you. Sure, the sharp, sharp sides are together. And again, you want to make sure you're coming up through that hole because if you come up through here, it's not gonna, it's gonna be a mess. You won't get the result you're looking for. Sharp sides together. I'm not crossing it this time. Sharp sides together. This next one I will crisscross, and I'm going to try feeding a button onto it. A little tricky. So I want to make sure I go into this bottom hole because I said I was going to crisscross it. Now I'm going to have to feed this one through the button as well. And I'm going to go into that hole. Whoops, didn't miss the button. There we go. There, now my button is attached to that bling right there. It's kind of cute. So you see how easy it is to attach a button. Actually, the first time I've done that. I've always just done charms. Flat sides together, or not flat sides, uh, rough sides together. Smooth sides out. Make sure you're sharing the hole. Again, smooth sides together. Oh, 
Okay. I'll crisscross the next two. I kind of have a pattern going here. And like I said, these are crossed over. It doesn't matter. Okay. Rough sides together. I'm making this for a friend who likes purple. Rough sides together. I think I'll try, I don't know if this button will fit. I'll try another button. Let's see what happens. So I know I have to, no, let me crisscross these next two and then I'll put another button on. That way I can keep that pattern going like I was talking about. rough sides together. As you can tell by the X's, this time I put the lavender one in first and then crossed over with the dark purple. And then I took the dark purple and then I crossed over with the lavender second. So I did the same thing over here, but it doesn't matter. Rough sides together. Now I'm going to add the button. Rough sides together. Crisscrossing it. Going down into the lower hole. And again, you don't ever have to crisscross them. You can just do it straight across. Or you could crisscross every single one of them. And I'm happy that actually fit through that button as well. So, yay. Nice, I could have done a button on every one of those. That would have been fun. All right, rough sides together. these two share that hole. I'm not going to crisscross these. Rough sides together, touching each other. These next two all crisscross. Or the next one all crisscross.
So I have 12 on this side, 11 on this side. I need to put my 12th one on. And actually, I think my friend that I'm making this for, I might make it a little bigger for her. I think sometimes she drinks um, out of a, a glass or a wine glass and I think this is a little tight for a wine glass so I'm gonna make it add just a couple more on for her and I had a pattern going here so I'm gonna cross these again And I need one more. And that hole is different. I said it doesn't matter, but I still like to keep them all the same, so. I guess because I'm making it for a gift for someone else. If I was making it for myself, I wouldn't care. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to pull these nice and tight. And here's the part that's a little tricky. So we're gonna link these up together. So this is where it helps to have these clips. I'm going to start with the light purple first, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to clip these two together while I'm doing the light purple. So these two have to share this one and this one have to share this hole right here. So these two share that one. And now Here's where you tie it off. See how I'll flip it around for you so you can actually see it. And this is cord that doesn't slip. So that knot right there is probably pretty good. I'm just going to finish it off with one more, a little more secure. You, this is what you, how you would have to secure it if you were using the clear elastic because that does slip. And then I'm just going to, you could leave them long, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to clip it off there and there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the dark purple. I'm going to unclip that. These two share this back hole back here. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to tie it tight. and tie it one more time secure. There we go. gonna just bling it up for her.
chain nose pliers work well for this. I'm just hanging it from the bottom there. You can put on as many or as few as you want. I think I'll hang this one on too. Uh, one other thing you can do is I have these chains that you can use for jump rings as well. So, or I could actually make it dangle a little bit. That would look cute. And there you have it. And see, that still fits on the bottle, not as tight as the other ones, which is kind of nice. And you can continue hanging as many charms on there as, a, as you'd like. Um, this one was a pair of earrings. I lost the other one too, so these are going to make great charms for me to hang on to, to the bling. Um, you can also use this as a bracelet. You can attach several things like this to it and even make it and turn it into like a cha-cha bracelet if you attach these little eye pins on there or head pins on there. I can actually add this one onto there. Right there on the bottom. not purple but she won't mind it's blingy maybe I'll add one more okay great birthday gifts People say no gifts, please. They don't seem to mind if if it's something that's been upcycled. Whoa. pretty secure okay all right I think I'm happy with that and there we go I hope you like this video please like share and subscribe if you know somebody who would like to upcycle with soda tabs and I'll try and get some more videos out soon. Thank you for watching. So I just completed my video and as I was watching it, I realized that my hands went out of the frames several times. I hate it when that happens, so I apologize. So I've whipped up another one real fast I'm going to keep my hands in the frame and I'm going to show you how to tie off the end once again. So these two sat tabs are going to share the whole of this tab when you're tying them off. All right, so I like to clip off the one that I'm not working with. It's actually going to be these two because I'm crisscrossing the entire, this entire bracelet got crisscrossed. So I'm going to tie off this one right here. So again, these two tabs on the back here, let me flip it over actually. These two tabs on the back, which is now the front, are going to share the holes of this one. All 
I wanted to crisscross. So it's actually going to go into this hole down here so it crisscrosses. All right. There we go. Now I'm going to clip these two off. It is very confusing to tie off. That's why I want to be sure you see it. And it's much easier to tie off with the straight stitch than it is with the crisscross stitch. Now. Again, these two tabs share the one behind. Whoops, that doesn't look right. And why is that? Oh, it is right, it just doesn't look right. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. And what happened was my clip came out. That's why it didn't look right. Okay, that's right. I'm going to crisscross these two when I tie. No, actually, I'm not going to crisscross because it's not crisscrossed on the back. I'm going to clamp off these two. Again, this cord doesn't slip, but I'm still going to do a very secure knot. And clip that off. Now I'm going to unclamp these two. And I'm going to tie this the exact same way. Boy, I hope I kept my hands in the frame this time. And a secure knot by going around that twice. There we go. And now I will just clip off the ends. And there we have it. Very nice. Thanks for watching this video.